Oh, goody. All right. What's going on, everybody? Zombies here again. And today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. Today we have a deck overview. Haven't done one of these in a while, but here we do something a little fun for the holidays and share probably my favorite deck I've played post patch. Now, it's no secret that Arrow, one of my favorite cards in the game, always really enjoyed her. And I've been enjoying her a lot after the recent change. Wasn't initially that thrilled about how the card was changing mechanically, but so far so good. Card has felt pretty great, and this has been one of the better shells I have found for her. This is also a lore approved arrow deck. So if you don't know the arrow lore, I'll leave a link in the description. Did a lore video on her a while ago, but it is a bit of a lore win as we do have Iron Man and Silk in here. We're both relevant characters to her in the lore. So we're gonna go over the deck here, the general breakdown of how it works, why we're running these cards, and we'll have some gameplay going alongside it just so you get a bit of a feel for it. So the first thing you might notice here is we are not running any tech cards in this deck. And honestly, I didn't really miss them that much. Now, you definitely could fit some tech cards in here if you wanted to, but that would require restructuring the deck a bit. And I think that's something you can do if you want to. Basically, the core of this deck is all the move cards we have here, and then arguably Iron Lad and Iron Man on top of it. But really, the move cards are our general core. And then we filled in the remaining slots with the Darkhawk package, as well as the Iron Lad and Iron Man pack. The Darkhawk package has been nice in this deck as the disruption it provides is very solid. And even with Blob around, Darkhawk still does pretty well, especially when you can get those rocks going early to hopefully disrupt Thanos. So your Darkhawk remains really big against them. Now, one of the things I like the most about this deck is the fact that we are constantly moving both our cards and our opponent's cards around the board. The benefit of this is it makes it really hard to predict not only where our cards are going to end up on the final turn and how much power is going to be there, but we can also use our cards to clog up the opponent when they're not expecting it, most notably with Polaris and Arrow, though sometimes Spider-Man does a pretty good job of that as well. Silk is probably the trickiest card to manage in the deck. You do want to get her down early if possible, as if we can consistently trigger her, not only will we be pumping up our Kraven, but it can be especially handy if we get Miles off the top of the deck and are able to play him for his reduced cost. The Iron Man and Iron Lad package provide us a way of going tall without being as vulnerable to Shang-Chi. One of the things I really love about this deck is generally, most of our cards here are not Shang-Chi-able except for Darkhawk, and even then he's not always in Shang-Chi range, so it often makes Shang-Chi a dead card for the opponent. There is a little bit more ongoing hate around right now than usual because of Miss Marvel, so do be aware of that. But in general, Iron Lad and Iron Man have been really, really good for me. So in terms of game plan, you're really just trying to play out your cards as effectively as you can on the early turns. Porg on one if you have it, and to Craven or Silk on two. Jeff, also not a bad option. This deck really relies on getting as many stats down as possible, so you do want to try and fill in your curve as effectively as you can on each turn. It definitely pays off to always be thinking about Miles, even when he's not in your hand, as, as making sure you can weave him in for one mana can oftentimes be the difference between winning and losing a lane. He's also really nice at the end of the game. If you can sneak him in with a Iron Man or Arrow, works very nicely for the curve. The other reason I really like the Darkhawk package in this deck is it adds a lot of valuable Iron Lad hits. So not only is Iron Man a top tier hit, but sometimes hitting Darkhawk will also just win you the game on the spot or just hitting Korg or Rock Slide adds to some more disruption, which can deny your opponent draws, which is always nice. And even some of the less high value hits like Kraven or Jeff or even Silk can sometimes still be pretty useful. I think Polaris in particular is a card a lot of people are sleeping on, especially while Thanos is really popular. Being able to just yoink a stone and fill up a lane that they already have kind of full has been really, really strong for me. And then speaking of filling lanes, that is something that Arrow has been really, really good at. Generally, with this deck, you oftentimes have priority, so you will flip first, and what that means is Arrow will pull the last card your opponent played on the prior turn into her location. Since she's not coming down until later on in the game, oftentimes they will have one lane that's full with three cards, so just being able to yoink a card over there with Arrow, close the lane, put nine power in it, can often give us a really easy path to victory. This is especially helpful against Miss Marvel decks as well, because if they already have a card in that lane of the same cost, you can move that card over and then they'll lose the Miss Marvel effect. Or sometimes we just pull Miss Marvel herself and the opponent usually does not expect that. So yeah, if you've been looking for a fun deck to make use of Arrow with and not having to worry about timing your tech cards, 
this is probably a deck I would recommend to you. It definitely does take a bit of getting used to, as there are room for mistakes with the move effects, but in general, I think once you've played it a bit, you get the hang of it, and it performs fairly well. These tempo move style decks have always been some of my favorite in the game ever since the first Silk one got popular, so I'm really quite happy to see this deck doing well right now. As I mentioned at the start though, you can definitely modify this deck if you aren't as big of a fan of the Darkhawk package or maybe you're lacking the cards for it. Really the overall core here are the move cards, so Jeff, Silk, Polaris, Spidey, Miles, Arrow, and Craven, and you can kind of fill in those last five slots with whatever you want. I recommend putting in packages that go well together, so we did that with Darkhawk and the Iron Lad packages. Annihilus could be another package you could consider because you can potentially fill up that right lane sometimes so you don't have to worry about Sentry. So you can put in the Sentry Annihilus Hood package, which can often be pretty decent for a high tempo deck such as this one. And then you could also put in tech if you're feeling like you're missing out on tech cards like Shadow King or Shang-Chi in order to flip the game on the final turn or later in the game. Those are some other options you could consider. I also think Ham is a really, really strong tech card right now if you want to go for a bit lower cost one, as being able to nullify a threat from the opponent and know what you don't have to play around can really work to your advantage. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And if you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.